Hello and welcome to What the Fort. Today we're looking at animal bones. We've already covered pottery, clay pipe and Victorian glass bottles, but now it's time to look at another large group of finds that archaeologists regularly discover on site. Animal bones tell us much more than just what people ate in the past. They teach us about other uses of animals, how we treated animals that we didn't eat, such as dogs and cats, about butchery techniques, trade and exchange, and how we disposed of animals when they died. This is obviously a huge topic, so today will just be a brief introduction. First of all, we need to understand where bone survives. Unfortunately, animal and human bones don't survive in all types of soil. Very acidic soils erode bones away over time. So down here in the southwest of England, we've lost some of the bones from many areas because of this. Bone rarely survives from most of Cornwall because of the soil type, and many areas in Devon have the same problem. In the urban areas such as Exeter and Plymouth, the preservation is better due to the soils being built up and the chemical makeup changed by human activity. The most important question to answer when archaeologists find bones on site is are they human or animal? Bone specialists or osteoarchaeologists can tell the difference between the two by looking at the thickness, size and shape of the bones, but this can be quite difficult, especially if the pieces are small. When trying to identify animal bones, we first try to tell which part of the body it is from. Is it a tooth, a long bone, a vertebrae or a rib? Is it a foot bone or from part of the skull? Then we can compare the bones to figure out which animal they came from. As you can imagine, here in the UK, the most common species to find on sites since the Neolithic, when animals were domesticated, are the animals that have been eaten. These are mostly cattle, sheep, pig and chicken or domestic fowl. We do find remains of other domestic animals though, such as dogs, horses and cats. We also see the remains of wild animals such as deer, rodents, wild birds including ducks, geese, swans, pigeons crows and ravens and even small birds. We also find fish and amphibian bones. The most robust part of the skeleton and therefore the one that is most commonly found are the teeth. Here we have a mixture of teeth found on archaeology sites. Cattle, sheep and horse have quite long molars. This is because they have a herbivore diet and need strong teeth for chewing grass. Horse molars tend to have deeper grooves on their sides and have a square or oblong chewing or occlusal surface. Cattle and sheep have a more pinched appearance and the cusps are a bit more separate to each other. Pig molars have very lumpy bumpy or cuspy surfaces like human teeth. This is because we're both omnivores. They also have these amazing tusks which are larger in males and these are used for defence and digging up roots and other food sources. The last group of teeth we have here are from carnivores. These are dog and cat mandibles and these have short sharp pointed teeth for shredding meat. Young animals and even humans are born with unfused bones. This means the ends of the bones are not attached, like with these pig leg bones. These fuse at set times which help us identify the age that the animals were killed or died at. We can also use wear on teeth to discover this. This helps us figure out if the animals were kept for secondary sources such as dairy or wool or for pulling ploughs. Archaeologists also look for butchery marks on the bones to learn more about processing techniques. Were the carcasses being divided into joints of meat for transporting using chops to the bones, such as the chop through this pig pelvis? Or was the meat being removed straight from the carcass with knife cuts? If we see that horns have been sawn through, we can infer that there was craft work going on. There are also many bones that we find that don't have butchery marks, such as these chicken bones, but that doesn't mean that the meat was not eaten straight from the bone. We also measure the lengths of bones to try to understand if certain species were getting taller through time with selective breeding. 
For instance, Iron Age cattle and sheep were often smaller than those in the later Roman period, and domestic animals in the post-medieval period were taller than those in the medieval period. Here we have some sheep, metacarpals, some chicken femurs and some dog radius, and they're all quite different sizes to each other. We measure the lengths to find out how tall the overall animal was. All of the clues that we look for on the bones tell us lots about how they treated animals in the past, how they traded, bred and disposed of them after death. Thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope to see you soon!